Yeah. And uh, actually, I met some of the performative aspects of this already. <laughs> so you will see it on my slides as well. Um, I don't know what the people will present. No, no, yes. <laughs> you, you will see around 30 maps. Uh, I need to um, say that. So uh, mostly I have met some on my slides. And um, it is generally believed that uh, maps are neutral technical products uh, which are similarly based on mathematical realities, but they are actually uh, subjected to representations of a precise vision of uh, spaces. They are holders of performative power and subject to intentional distortion for geopolitical, economic, uh, and other aims. Maps can uh, construct reality and stimulate actions that are coherent with such construction, that is, actions that intervene on the territory to adapt it to what is foreseen by the map. Maybe you all know some um, persuasive, you have seen, um, I don't have an example here, but persuasive maps from the World War propaganda, um, for example, were like uh, some uh, magazines were, which were disseminating uh, propaganda maps about uh, um, portraying uh, Germany, um, um, Germany in a position which is vulnerable uh, uh, under in a vulnerable state under the threat uh, from its neighbors, and where uh, and these maps were aimed to uh, yeah to people who. So they would believe that uh, actually it's not the Germany is not their address, but it is certainly <coughs> their addresses. Um, yeah. So um, and maps became an integrative part of Russian Ukrainian formation warfare, and, uh, and I became interested in um, texts accompanied by uh, different uh, cartographical representations and interpretations of the. Um, regional diversity and divisions of Ukraine and uh, Russian and also Ukrainian media. <coughs> and what I will present uh, today are mainly maps from various online articles and also from uh, TV programs and TV series, uh, maps of Ukraine, uh, which um, are indispensable parts of the discourse about uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine's regional divisions, uh, Ukraine as a failed state and divided country. Um, in the meaning of discourse is realized from more than one semiotic code, then uh, it is a, could be called multimodal uh, discourse, and maps uh, could be understood as texts, as sign systems. Uh, the combination of graphic and verbal elements uh, makes maps complex semiotic systems, and in my research I uh, seek to analyze how text draw on mode of communication such as pictures of maps in combination with words made. Um, yeah, maps can represent space much better than words, which have to be pronounced in a linear sequence. Um, in words, so uh, in model, multimodal text, uh, uh, the image can represent a word uh, or an expression, or it can be a metaphor. The written text can give the image a surprise meaning, or the meaning of the written text can be formulated in the context of the image. Uh, the interrelations. Uh, um, can be seen um, as complex arguments in which uh, reason, text, and visualization uh, correspond to each other, stasis, reason, and consequence. Um, this is the case in advertising as well as uh, in special textual forms as maps. So, um, I, what, I, what I will demonstrate will be uh, multimodal texts uh, which embody uh, argument structures. Uh, maps have a special performative power for uh, contributing, contributing to the meaning of text about the divided Ukraine. And uh, first, there is nothing visual, uh, easier to visualize than the fragmentation of the country. Especially in popular politics, a map provides a simplified view of political geography in which an alternative political reality seems to be real. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so the map expresses this about what is the case or what should be the case on, on sides of the anti-Ukrainian yeah, anti positions. Uh, uh, numerous uh, fictive maps circulate in which Ukraine is reduced, for example, to small territory uh, which is not present at all on the map or uh, divided in several cases. Um, 
So, but first I would like to come back uh, to the beginning before the conflict and, and uh, uh, as you know, the, there is a sim simplified way of understanding Ukraine's regional divisions. Here you uh, see a couple of examples how Ukraine is divided in, in East uh, and West and this usually played uh, in this uh, narrative for, for which is a little bit is presented. Uh, rather, um, for European West, uh, which speaks Ukrainian, shares uh, liberal democratic values and um, seeks to return uh, uh, to Europe and so on. And from the other side, Eastern Ukraine, uh, Russian speaking region, oriented to Russia, uh, kind of hostile to the West and so on. Um, yeah, the idea of the divided Ukraine was uh, expressed in various forms by different intellectuals, and one of them uh, already at the beginning of the 90s. Uh, uh, by Samuel Huntington, who expressed his, his idea and fame of commercial civilizations. And this was an important as Huntington gave support to the emergence of me for two new friends. <coughs> even became spoken, it has been often uh, referred to it, uh, explaining the Ukrainian crisis. And yeah, so uh, this uh, Huntingtonization, it could be called Huntingtonization of the discourse, uh, which means certain uh, regional differences. Uh, to Ukraine's and to the difference between two civilizations. And then uh, also, of course, is the map of the civilizations. <coughs> and also, um, yeah, the uh, Orange Revolution uh, was a crucial point in the Ukraine's political division. The notion of two Ukraine's existed already before that, but after that it became a more heated issue. The politicization of language and ethnicity was noticeable, especially the point during this uh, revolution when one candidate mobilized Ukrainian speaking electorate and the uh, other one uh, sought um, uh, support among ethnic Russians and Russian speakers. So, also other political communities um, after that used uh, were using the division uh, between the East and the West in the elections, directing their campaign at the eastwards, treating the electorate as pro Western or eastwards, treating it as pro uh, Russian. <coughs> and so, uh, already before Maidan and uh, the military conflict in Ukraine, there were uh, predictions about the dis disintegrated Ukraine. Already, uh, this is one of the examples from 2011 from the uh, TV program Center Sabiti Sana Prokhorovay, in which maps of Ukraine are used as a representation of predictions of some European political scientists. And uh, I uh, quote uh, Euro European sci uh, political scientists. Uh, awaiting for the reunion of the USSR, of course, not in the same constellation, not with the same ideology before, but, uh, by, uh, but by conducting a research of modern uh, geopolitics, they came to the conclusion that in the nearest 20 years, uh, on the post Soviet territory, a Russian Union will emerge, which will be joined by the former Soviet republics. <coughs> The uh, first of all, by uh, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Tajikistan, the incorporation of uh, Baltic states is excluded, and as for Ukraine, uh, it will be partly, partly incorporated. So, political scientists predict for uh, its disintegration into three parts. In the East and Crimea will be part of the Union, uh, Central Ukraine will be uh, its ally and partner, and only Galicia, by all means, will try to preserve, preserve independence and of all the quotation. And this is the map from this uh, program. <coughs> I would like to draw your attention that the map doesn't correspond fully to the wars, which is, it should represent, Galicia is uh, presented not in its actual historical borders, but together with one region uh, which is connected to the imagined space of Galicia. Apart from that, uh, Transcopacia and Kovina regions are distinguished in the map, and there is nothing said about them in the TV program. Um, and it's very often the case that um, maps do not correspond to the uh, text or presented in uh, on TV. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so, um, but so this is the federal uh, channel, so um, governmental channel. So uh, during Maidan, there were also maps that were popular, uh, even more, and uh, this 
this is a new map from the Piero Canal again too, and uh, I um, say this uh, again. Uh, two houses of one uh, Maidan pulls to Europe, now there are just to stop. So two one house, the, uh, two one, uh, half the bus is okay. The bus brings people from the west of the country, another from the east. At the same time, both sides say they truly advocate for the interests of the country, the ones who went to Europe and the ones who went to Russia will not be Europeans, nor Russians, in the case of the advantage of one of the sides. It will be the same turned about by contradictions and oppositions uh, in Ukraine, or oh, it will not be. Uh, our correspondent, uh, um, Eugenie Baramek, talked with experts about the most hard scenario, the disintegration of Ukraine as a country. In any development of the uh, events in Maidan, there is only one thing clear. It is being decided not so much the direction of the further development of the country, but the existence of the country, uh, country state. During the last was that, was that before uh, it's, to change the bit of the war or what? It's during Maidan. It's actually this map. Uh, so it's a new winter? Uh, yeah, well, sorry, I don't have here the. Uh, didn't write it. Uh, it was the winter, yeah. It was, I think, the violent spring. Um, yeah, so this is the quotation goes uh, then like this. During the last 20 years, Ukraine didn't manage to form the United Ukraine nation. Already in 2008, from the <coughs> geopolitical magazine was a text predicting the disintegration of the country into three parts. According to the forecast, the scenario could be like this. On the territory of modern Ukraine, political parts will emerge. Eastern Ukraine and Crimea, which will be part of Russia. Central Ukraine, <coughs> uh, which would be a, in a new so called pro Russian bloc. Western Ukraine, there are uh, like different oblasts, which would have a neutral status. After that, the author of this forecast, Uchi Karachov, the editor of this magazine, said it was not a prognosis, but rather a statement of heterogeneity of the national territories straight up to gaining the independence different of different ethnic uh, different ethnic and cultural realities were present in Ukraine. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the uh, quotation of this Lucio uh, Karachov, uh, this uh, from the Lens magazine and uh, this magazine is actually financed by Gazprom. Um, yeah, so, but uh, this is the federal state and uh, I was uh, um, a bit surprised about the, um, you know, explanation of Maidan, which was very similar um, to the explanation of the federal state, but federal state, and you can see an example of, uh, uh, from Dost, uh, the channel, which uh, is uh, seen, at least in Ukraine, as uh, Kind of partly more dejected uh, in comparison to the other uh, TV uh, channels, and uh, yeah, so this is uh, the map, and the presenter um, uh, shows the Ukraine divided into west and east, and it's basically a new political map of Ukraine during the Maidan, and uh, sets for the worst. Uh, today, the deputy of city council of Sevastopol came out with a provocative appeal to Vladimir Putin, please send the military to Ukraine to protect the sovereign sovereignty of the country, Russian speakers, Crimea, and the other regions of Ukraine. And while saying this, the half of the map transforms into colors of Russia. And the presenter keeps on talking about similar suggestions from other political forces in Ukraine. And in case of Western Ukraine, it is colored as a flag of the European Union by hinting that the protesters support the European integration. Uh, this kind of representation is a simplified image of the reasons of the Maidan process, which were widely presented as a conflict between one part of the population uh, from the West uh, and uh, with another from the East, which demonstrated for the European integration um, like, like part. One part was the European integration demonstrating, and that's why uh, there was this conflict. So this is uh, kind of this argumentation was also present, uh, um, yeah, yeah, at the channel. Um, yeah, so maps uh, could be also integrated into posters, uh, and not only in TV programs uh, and uh, not only in online articles, but this kind of map uh, appeared in March 7, 14. Um, it 
took two maps of Crimea on the left side. The peninsula was covered with the red with a swastika on it, covered by um, barbed wire. And so on the right side, Crimea uh, had the colors of the Russian flag. The head of the poster contained the phrase, on March 16th, we will choose either or. While the alternative conjunction uh, of positions at the bottom between the uh, two pictures of Crimea signifies uh, occupied fascist or liberated by Russia. Two visualizations represent the thesis that the Ukrainian Crimea would be a fascist prison. Uh, this absurd uh, allegation is uh, a defamation of Ukraine and uh, who did not support the, uh, the connection uh, of Crimea to Russia. Um, but, yeah. Um, uh, so, well, in the end, the argument is that if we want to avoid fascism in Crimea, we have to vote for Russia. Um, not only these uh, uh, maps of Crimea appeared, uh, uh, but also maps of Russia were disseminated in media. Uh, I put uh, Novorossian uh, with a question mark because actually um, usually only historians knew about Novorossia at least well in Ukraine. Um, so Novorossia was a government of the Russian Empire that, uh, um, that existed for a very short time in the 18th century and the name received a renewed emphasis when Vladimir Putin stated in an interview in the, um, April 2014 that the eastern territories of Ukraine were part of the hidden rhetoric provides a thesis about the irregularity of the Ukrainian borders and presents uh, for the large audience uh, very moral reasons so to justify the annexation of nearly half of current Ukraine. And uh, yeah, in May 2014, the USF proclaimed uh, Dennis and Lugan's People's Republic to the uh, claimed to the Federation of the Congress. Um, yeah, so the other maps which appeared. Uh, <coughs> Also, this uh, kind of how uh, Novorossia could emerge and uh, uh, how could it happen. As that maps as used as uh, usual uh, splits of offensives. And uh, there is the war in, uh, another map which uh, was disseminated online, uh, not so much on TV as uh, the map of the so called Donetsk uh, Kiver of the Soviet Republic. Um, and uh, that was a kind of self-declared uh, republic uh, kind of founded in uh, February 1918 and which existed rather on paper. And um, yeah, so a lot of uh, maps were produced like that so because uh, this uh, DPR and LPR uh, uh, Donetsk People's Republic had declared that uh, they are like a successor of the Kibber of Soviet Republic. <coughs> yeah, um, well, um, I will skip that, but it's actually about this uh, kind of uh, electoral line of uh, uh, Ukraine between uh, two parts, and uh, that uh, it is claimed that, that uh, this conflict line, this fault line, shifted, uh, was shifted to the east. Um, and of course, um, there were a lot of talks about uh, you know, federalization of Ukraine. And, way out for Ukraine uh, from the crisis and so on. That's why we were a lot of maps produced uh, uh, online, uh, different uh, articles in live journals and so on, and different websites about uh, who, uh, how possibly it could be federalized uh, as one of the uh, examples. Um, so another example, so you see Danieska Trodorowska. Uh, kind of republic here as well. Um, yeah, so there were a lot of uh, fake news and not only fake news about the separate regions um, that they want to uh, yeah, separate or some kind of autonomous uh, gatherings and, um, and so on. <laughs> about the, the, the Sarabia, the Kovina, the Asia, uh, the Parisian, and so on. And well, maybe you know this example from <laughs> but the territorial to, territorial maps of fingers. Uh, yeah, it's more or less uh, uh, recent. So yeah, one of the major narr narratives of uh, uh, Russian uh, information uh, warfare is that uh, uh, actually that uh, na Western neighbors Ukraine have some territorial things, and of course it's visualized again with maps on the, uh, 
this TV program on Tuesday afternoon um, from September, um, September 2018 it was. Um, so this is estimated vision of Ukraine by the Western neighbors. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so what they say is um, that uh, since transfer Petty had belonged to Hungary prior to the uh, beginning of the 20th century, Budapest wants to regain control of the region. If, uh, if no one is openly talking about it in the south, it's not all uh, historically Ukrainian either. And the Poles are keeping an eye on Ukrainian militia, Polista and Polina. And uh, in the end, um, yeah, Western aggressors uh, are greater having practice the whole of the Western Ukraine just with a uh, little part living in Kiev. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, here is you see the Polish map <coughs> on the Russian TV channel and the back. And uh, yeah, so they are uh, talking that actually speaking Zhivanovsky, maybe you can not see him and the other one is uh, an examining dictator, a literary chief of Echo uh, Moskvin radio station. Um, yeah, so the names of this map are in Polish, uh, this claim by the debater uh, that Poles uh, are seriously considering the question of the division of Ukraine and uh, by showing the map they uh, say these words, um, so this is um, Polish name here and so on. Uh, so, but there is a story um, uh, behind this uh, Polish uh, map, it was uh, really shown on the Polish TV, but in a different context, the map was a representation of the offer of the dimension of Jewish to send a letter to the government of Poland, Hungary, uh, so he sent a letter to the government of Poland, Romania, and Hungary proposing a joint division of the country, but in the Russian program on the country, contrary to was claimed that Poland uh, considered to divide Ukraine. So, uh, so they used uh, the produced map by the Poles, uh, which was showing the offer there are different maps like this, uh, like in Poland, uh, there are actually written uh, um, yeah, online um, different websites for like, um, well, Polish version, <laughs> let's say, um, with different texts. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you see different kinds of uh, maps like this, where Ukraine doesn't exist, uh, or even uh, there is a um, uh, this kind of uh, division, uh, it was even before the conflict actually, and uh, here there was uh, this uh, Galicia with a linear color, with uh, this uh, colors uh, by saying kind of their argument is that uh, they uh, have kind of uh, nationalistic, uh, they are nationals like uh, the previous yeah, uh, Ukrainian nationalist uh, army, uh, OPA. Uh, this is uh, another one, a harder one, uh, yeah, so with uh, where it's kind of the uh, fascist. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, actually, um, Novorossia is how part of the Ukraine, and so uh, it's written here um, that Nazis have no place in our earth. Um, yeah. Ukraine, uh, how 
uh, Russia is cruel to Ukraine and uh, gave as uh, gift a lot of territories to Ukraine. Uh, it's just, uh, so there are videos, so there are like uh, these uh, interactive uh, maps um, showing uh, the history. And they are explaining, so I don't think it's from it, but it's <laughs> But in the sense that, um, yeah, so you can see then uh, how it really evolves, well, its interpretation of the history of Ukraine, and then they then say, and actually, and Western Ukraine has never uh, uh, belonged to uh, Russian Empire, though it belonged, so you see now. Uh, so actually, the maps and texts uh, they contradict to each other. Um, yeah, so this is a very open case, and uh, I would like to show you another, um, yeah, another, another this kind of Padakius, say, and so on. <laughs> maps, uh, different models, and this so variant is websites with maps of Ukraine, for example, this Mitiaskis in Ukraine. Uh, our um, former politicians uh, created this project and they have uh, disseminated uh, on it. And uh, yeah, so uh, you know, our <coughs> president, our president was uh, uh, an actor in, uh, in the set TV series where he played the uh, president of Spain. <laughs> and uh, so there, uh, I've seen only one uh, series of it, so the last one, a uh, day before the elections, and the map was just in it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, this, uh, this integrated Ukraine. Oh, it's, uh, okay, this integrated Ukraine uh, and the map, and uh, he asked like, and people agreed on that, and the uh, advisor said like, oh, just six my answers. People <laughs> prefer to keep calm, and uh, the uh, circle goes like that. that uh, Zelensky managed to gather Ukraine uh, parts by parts, and in the end, the only parts in the west and the east left, and uh, yeah, but he managed to also to. United Ukraine kind of this argument. So um, I think it's and uh, yeah. So you see how maps are parts of the discourse. Uh, yeah. So they are uh, types of popular geopolitics and can be used as justification or legitimation of war. Um, yeah, and uh, they present uh, political realities or provide a uh, kind of. Uh, Forecast like future realities, uh, uh, visualize future, and uh, have special persuasive performative power more than words. Uh, and uh, yeah, so and as I showed there were uh, maps uh, before the uh, usual uh, actual conflict. So actually, uh, yes, yeah, uh, one of the evidence of the aggressive policy of the uh, Russian Federation also presented. Uh, uh, thank you. So. Yeah.